Remind us to watch News 360. Portia, another sad story. Another day, another canoe accident that has killed several school children and left major question marks about the safety of inland water travel in Ghana. Nine pupils died on Wednesday evening after the canoe they were traveling on from school in Kele Tufana in the Wejagbawe municipality capsized. Uh, reporter Armstrong Gold visited the community to witness at first hand the grief, anger and despair of yet another inland water travel accident. This will forever go down as a dark Wednesday for the community of Kele, Pambros Uyaboman in the Wejagbawe municipality and Fana in the Gan South municipality or in the greater Accra region. Twelve school pupils boarded a canoe from Kele after school. Nine of them did not make it on the other side. This was after their self paddle canoe capsized halfway through their journey. 13 year old Enyona was one of three survivors of the accident. When I come and then the boy teaches, then I told her, I said that we are plenty inside the boat so we should remove some people down. The boy told me that we go so nothing will happen. When we are going then, boat, then the boats come and sink. When the boat sink, then I hold my brother. Then I don't know how my brother do. Then my brother fell off and then my brother has then me, I hold the boat. When some man is dead, then the man can be carried. Seven of the pupils died on the spot, with other two confirmed dead in hospital. The loss is enormous for the community. 13-year-old Enyonam lost her little brother in the accident. This woman also lost two of her children in the accident. <laughs> Some of the children are pupils of this school. Education of children at Fana, an island community in the Gasouth municipality, has come to a standstill two weeks after a canoe accident that killed nine school children. Joseph Armstrong returned to the community and reports that none of the children who survived, as well as others from the island, reported to school two weeks after the incident. Vision Redeemer Academy School is where most of the children from Fana attend school. Seven pupils from the school died in a canoe accident that occurred on May 10 this year. Almost all the classrooms are empty as students have not reported to school since the incident. A teacher who stays on the island has also stopped coming to teach his class without any explanation. Where I stand is a class made up of three. We have class one, class four and class three. This teacher you see sitting on this side is responsible for taking care of all these three classes because the other teachers that are responsible for their classes came from Fana. They've all stopped the school after the incident. We later crossed the river to Fana in the Gan South municipality. It is a taboo to bury dead bodies or give birth to a newborn baby in the community. Hence, none of the nine that died were buried in the community. It is a fishing community without electricity, clinic, schools, or potable water, or any other social amenities. We first met Achu, the 15-year-old boy who was paddling his mates back home before the incident. He has not returned to school. He was busy fetching sea sand. According to him, he has not returned to school because the incident is still fresh on his mind. He is still traumatized by the incident which claimed the lives of his colleagues.
I have flashbacks anytime I go to bed, and that has become a nightmare to me. We later visited Angela, another surviving victim. She was also not in school. Angela has not been well since the disaster. She is yet to come out of the shock. Her parents say she screams while sleeping every night. Even though governments through the assemblies have assured of providing them with psychologists, that is yet to materialize. Other children in the community also did not go to school for fear of losing their lives. We also met Augustine, a level 300 student of the University of Education, Winneba. He is back on vacation to support his parents in fishing to raise money for his fees. He fears if nothing is done to help the community, education will come to a halt. Because of what's happened, what, nowadays when you said they should go to school, they, they will tell you they are afraid. Kids, they will tell you, I don't want to be like my friend who got drawn. If government doesn't do anything, anything soon, then the education of these people will go down, seriously, and will all be illiterate and be, become fishermen and uh, fishmongers in the town, and which will not help the country. I may say all hope is not lost. You can be here, you can come here and school if you are determined. Everything that you, you have to do in life is all about determination. Bennett Stone, a resident, shares similar sentiment. No basic amenities can be found over here. Nothing of that sort can be found over here. Like what? No hospital, no light, no pipe of water, no school. May 10, 12 school pupils boarded a cannon from Uyaboman after school. Nine of them did not make it. This was after their cannon capsized halfway through their journey. Seven of the pupils died on the spot with another two dying at the hospital. The loss is enormous for the community. Aweche, a boat operator in the community, told the news team the tragic accident was their worst nightmare. I am in pain more than even their parents. It's rather unfortunate. All right, so uh, that's the unfortunate story of uh, citizens and residents of Fana, where nine school children lost their lives in an attempt to cross the river uh, to get some education. Let's uh, find out what exactly can come in terms of assistance, psychological assistance for these persons. Dr. Collins Bedouajiman is a senior lecturer, Department of Psychology, and the national president of the chair, president chair for uh, executive committee, Ghana Psychological Association. Doc, good evening. Thank you for your time. Good evening, Martin. We know that there's uh, supposed to be individual psychological assistance, but then is there a way that a grieving community and the group of people we have just seen um, can be given any kind of assistance, you know, beyond just individual assistance? Well, I think, uh, Martin, we need to commend Media General for following up on this particular matter. Uh, more often than not, when disasters of such nature happen, we see the movement of uh, relevant others in society, those who should have been responsible, they move them in drones in their numbers to go and commiserate with the community. And that will be it a day after, a week after, and is dead and gone. We are back to the vulture syndrome. And it is very sad looking at the first story that you just shared and then linking it to this particular one. And I think we need to act expeditiously to support this community. Disaster of such magnitude affects a number of people, those who survived, then the schoolmates, those who lost their colleagues through the disaster, family members, the teachers, the parents, community members, 
rescue operators, those who may have come in, individuals from the community to rescue, even NAGMO officials, fire service officials, and even you media personnel who go to the scene, you always see these charged, emotionally charged experiences, the sight of some of these things. All these members will need psychosocial support, and especially those who are very much ingrained in this particular activity must be supported. And if this is not done, there can be dire consequences. And I'm not surprised the experiences that some of the parents were sharing about their children, the anxiety and nervousness, the flashes of memory when they sleep, uh, they become jittery and wake up all of a sudden. Some may also even resort to substance abuse, the parents and family members who may have lost their children. And all these ones, we need to support them to begin to adjust. Mm. And the painful aspect, the loss of purpose in life, some of these children may not even develop their interest again to go back to school. And we cannot deny these young ones that opportunity of making mm. it in their own life. Doc, and that clearly underscores the need for psychological or psychosocial assistance, like you indicated. But um, in such a situation, how do we roll it out? How can, if we have a state institution that's supposed to handle this, what is the approach supposed to be like? Well, one, one would have expected that, expect that uh, not more, especially show the lead. But once again, let me put the question. Um, to what extent is not more? well capacitated to carry out such psychosocial interventions. So what is the capacity of NADMO? Beyond giving mattresses, beyond giving some subsidy by way of food, especially when some of the disasters happen, mm. what next? What capacity do they have? And if you look at the regional level, one would have expected that indeed we have some kind of a rescue task force. We mm. keep having these experiences. We need to have a standby tax force that will support the work of NADMO. Okay. We will need social workers, we will need psychologists, we will need public health experts. We will even need urban developers and community planners so that together we'll be able to plan an intervention whenever there, there are these disasters. Right. I, I just don't want to remind people what has happened in times past. Mm. But we have to, as an association, out of our own will, negotiate with relevant stakeholders to support their palm drowning disaster, Saboba drowning disaster, we went to Apiate and what have you. Hmm. And so we are ready, um, given the, the, the circumstances of this community, to support all the relevant agencies, uh, Ministry of Children and Child Protection, Accra Regional Minister, right. the relevant municipality and what have you, so that we'll be able to support this particular community. Dr. Collins Bedouajiman, thank you so much for your time and thoughts as always, um, Senior Lecturer, University of Ghana. Let's now continue with the rest of our stories. And the 16-year-old operator of the canoe which capsized and killed nine pupils in Fana, an island community in the Gasal municipality, is still not in school five months after the incident. Over 20 students in the community have also dropped out of school due to government failure to provide a canoe with an outboard motor and a psychologist for surviving victims, as promised. Joseph Armstrong has the rest of the story. On May 10, 2023, at Fana in the Gansout municipality, nine children lost their lives when their boat capsized while returning from school, bringing bad memories to the community and family members. State officials visited the scene and promised to provide a canoe with an outboard motor to transport people to school every day. We are going to bring a canoe and an outboard bottle to them to help them and uh, uh, a life jacket as well. So these are the immediate interventions that in earnest uh, RCC together with the assemblies and the members of parliament will do whilst we wait for the report and then see what government will also offer the community. Five months have passed but the promise is yet to be fulfilled. We are back at Fana, 
we visited Vision Redeemer Academy School where most of our children attend. Seven people died in the May 10 Kenuna accident. Most classrooms are empty and most students haven't reported to school five months later. There are no more coming to school because of what happened to them. Some of the parents, I think they are afraid to bring their awards here again. So they send them back to their various hometowns. We visited the NGO school, Secretary Service Awareness and Support Organization, where 13-year-old Angela, a victim of the accident, attained school. According to her teachers, she is yet to recover from the shock after the accident. Since the incident happened, when you give her work to do, she will not do it. Then she will be mentioning the name of those who pass on. Her teachers say getting a psychologist for her and other victims of the accident will help them recover. After school, students spent over two hours waiting at the river bank for a canoe to arrive. They are fortunate to have some life jacket, we are told, was donated by some NGOs and also the South Assembly. The boat they promised them is, however, yet to be given to the final community. The 16-year-old at the center of the canoe accident and his parents have departed the community following attacks from the residents. The community leadership is dissatisfied that government has not fulfilled its promises. We are still waiting for them. They promised us a canoe and outboard motors, but it is taking forever. We are tired of the lies. The news team visited Tegbi in the Vota region where Augustine Achu and his family have relocated. But unfortunately, he is now a school dropout. We have to leave the community because the residents keep accusing and insulting my family for killing their children. It hurts a lot when they pass those comments. He's willing to go back to school if he gets financial support. I want to go back to school, but don't have any help. Augustine Achu, one of many children who dropped out of school due to the Kenon accident, is a victim of lack of support and access to basic social amenities and educational facilities in deprived communities. Sustainable Development Goal 4 targets for quality education aims to enhance education by providing equal access and equity for all ages, safer learning spaces, and more qualified teachers. However, the Gansau's Municipal Assembly has confirmed that the government has not yet provided a canoe and an operator to the Fana community. Joseph Armstrong, Gould, Alibu TV3, Fana, Gansau.